I just finished the mid-season finale of Star Trek Discovery Into the Forest I Go. And I have kind of mixed feelings about this episode, but I do think that it was one of the better episodes of Star Trek Discovery so far. So I'm just going to break down the plot with a quick overview and then talk about the things that I liked and the things that I didn't like as much about this episode. So this episode starts right where the previous episode left off with the Discovery right next to Pavo. The Klingons are coming for the Pavans and Lorca decides to disobey direct orders from the Admiral to go back to Starfleet and he decides to defend Pavo, although realistically he just wants to fight the Klingons because we haven't seen Lorca be the most caring and exploratory type except for in ways that involve weaponizing things. He sends Burnham and Tyler aboard the Klingon vessel to crack the cloaking device. In the meantime, Stamets has to do somewhere around 126 rapid jumps in quick succession in order to basically get readings to crack the code on the Klingon cloaking device. It's kind of a weird plot to have considering in later series they're still not able to detect cloaked Klingon vessels, so I'm sure there's going to be some kind of explanation for it, but it seems like a stupid plot point to have since you're going to have to either just retcon everything or be inconsistent, but okay. So while Stamets is doing that, Burnham and Tyler are aboard the Klingon vessel. They find Admiral Cornwell. Cornwall. Ash has a PTSD freakout while he's left with Cornwall um, because he encounters Laurel. And that sends him into this whole spiral because of, you know, the seven months of prolonged torture and sexual assault. And then Burnham leaves him with Cornwall and then she goes to the bridge to place the sensor and then challenges Cole to a duel. While they're fighting, Lorca is doing the jumps and eventually they crack the code. They take down the cloaking device. They beam out Burnham. Cornwall, Tyler, and Laurel, who kind of hitches a ride at the last moment. They're beamed back aboard the Discovery, and <clears throat> there's some character moments with Ash and Tyler. Oh yeah, and the Klingon vessel gets destroyed, because of course it does. And so there's a character moment between Tyler and Burnham where he talks a little bit about his PTSD and about how he's almost grateful for it because it brought him to her. And... Then we cut to a scene with Lorca and Stamets where he talks about getting Stamets a medal and how they're going to warp back to, I think, Starbase 46. And Stamets says, no, I'll do one last jump, because of course he does. And then the predictable thing happens and the jump goes horribly wrong. It looks like Lorca might actually sabotage the jump because you see him mucking about with a panel right before everything goes wrong. And... Then they appear to be in the mirror universe or somewhere else that's intensely wrong. And that's where the episode ends. So of course we're left with the, well, how do they get out of this pickle? Question for January. All in all, this episode had some really strong parts. First of all, it had the Klingons speaking more in English and they had Burnham use her universal translator. And that was nice because I absolutely despise the way they do the Klingons in Klingon. It makes them such boring characters, it makes them joyless and dull, and it makes it very hard for them to have any kind of emotional expression. I absolutely hate it. So every scene where they do the Klingons in English is just a much stronger scene because the actors are able to, you know, act a little bit, and I think that makes it considerably better. So... I thought those scenes were a lot stronger. I did really like the stuff between Burnham and Cole, actually, although I'm still having trouble getting any kind of attachment to these Klingons because they're such... they're so divorced from what I'm used to when I think of Klingons. You know, I might make an entire video just about the Klingons of Discovery and my issues with them because they are many. But there's just... I don't know, there's just a lot of flaws with them there. There were parts of that I liked, but there were parts I didn't like. Oh! Klingon boobs! I did not need to see Klingon boobs, and the way that they did it just felt cheap and pointless and just, ooh, look at the edgy stuff that we can do because we're on a streaming service now. This Star Trek says, fuck, it has boobs. I know you want to be Game of Thrones, but you're not Game of Thrones. Oh my god. I don't know. It just, 
you know, I feel like there's a contextual way they could have shown us Klingon boobs at some point that might have been more, like, more appropriate, but I feel like they just did it to do it at this point, and I'm not a fan at all of that scene. I liked the stuff with Stamets and Hugh. I thought that that was really good um, with his with his partner, and I liked the little La Boheme reference. That was really cute um, because Anthony Rapp was also in Rent, and so you know this episode. It had features that I like. I'm glad Admiral Cornwall wasn't dead. I guess because she's was kind of cool. But I feel like there just aren't all that many stakes because I just really still don't know or care that much about many of these characters. I feel like that this show has a lot more to do in terms of building this new series in terms of making me have something to really feel for. And I think that's the big problem with this episode is I want to like Michael Burnham, but she just still isn't that strong of a character, I feel like. and. I don't know, and I don't think it's Sonequa Martin-Green's fault, because I've seen her in The Walking Dead, and I've seen her in other things, and she's a really talented actress. I think it honestly is just kind of clumsy writing. I'm still, like, indecisive as to whether or not Ash Tyler is actually Vok in disguise or not, because a lot of it seems like it's building away from that idea, but I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. There's some pretty compelling fan theories I've seen for why it could be so, but this episode, I think, kind of threw a wrench into some of them with some of the stuff that he that he was doing and uh, a lot of the ways that he reacted to Laurel and things like that that didn't really seem like something a Klingon would do. So I'm, I'm not sure about that and I'm not sure how I would feel about it if he were. I did enjoy the character moment between him and Michael at the end and I thought that was a really nice... that was a much better scene than the one that I saw in the last episode on Pavo. I didn't really like that scene between them but I did like this one. and. Of course, I was not really thrilled that Stamets just becomes incapacitated at the end of the episode. I was entirely expecting it. Before they even announced the multiple jumps, I was expecting it because it's the season, the mid-season finale. So I knew they were going to do something dramatic like that. And, I don't know, I was kind of just disappointed that they didn't really seem to do anything very creative with it. And it felt like a very, very predictable direction to go. And I just, I don't know, I think they could have been more creative with that. All in all... This episode had some some good aspects. I liked the way the Klingon ship looked. I thought that was a cool, menacing design, and it looked really neat. And I thought a lot of the effects were pretty good. I don't know. If I had to rate this episode, I'd probably give it like a 6.5 out of 10. It definitely wasn't terrible. It's one of the better episodes of Discovery we've gotten so far. The pacing was pretty good. Characterization was okay. There were aspects of it I definitely wasn't a fan of, but... I, I didn't dislike watching it, and I definitely was engaged through the whole plot, wanting to know what happened next. So, if you're liking Star Trek Discovery so far, I'm sure you'll love this episode. If you're not into Discovery at this point, I don't think you'll like this episode. I'm still pretty lukewarm on the series. There are episodes that I really did sincerely enjoy. I don't despise this show or anything. But there are a lot of episodes that I've been very disappointed in. So, we'll see. I am definitely going to get rid of my CBS All Access subscription until January because that's just garbage. I mean, so many ads. The website, before you even click on a show, starts playing loud, obtrusive ads. It's the most annoying site ever. Terrible user interface. I just hate it. I hate everything about it. And it advertises better streaming services on it just to spite me. So I can't wait to cancel my subscription to CBS All Access for a month. But that's seven whole dollars they're not getting out of my wallet, so ha! Okay, well, that is everything I have for you on this. Please let me know what you thought of this episode in the comments down below. If you like my videos, like and subscribe. If you don't, I am sure you'll tell me. That's everything I have for you. Peter Zane.